Single replacement is the next one. And so single replacement is where re reactants are an element in a compound and the metal switches places. Now it could also be the non-metal, but the ones we're going to consider, it's the metal that switches places. So you can see that you have A, so we have a metal by itself, plus BC, a metal in a compound. And what happens is the A and B switch places so that A is now in the compound and B is by itself. So that's how a single replacement reaction works. And we determine these based on the activity series. And on your periodic table, you have this activity series, and it lists the metal from the most active to the least active. And the most active metal is the one that would most want to be in a compound. So lithium really wants to be in a compound where gold, not so much. And so in any single replacement, you can decide whether that's going to happen or not based on the activity series. So let me show you how that works. So if you consider this, this is single replacement. We have copper, that's an element, and silver nitrate, that's your compound. So you find those two metals in the list. So here's the silver, and here's the copper. So the one that's higher is the copper. That means copper wants to be in the compound. You look at it, it's not. Copper is all by itself. Well, it's not happy that way. The higher one wants to be in the compound. So the two metals are going to switch places. So the copper is going to go with the nitrate. So that here's the nitrate, and the silver is going to be by itself. Now you may wonder, what's that 2 doing, AgNO3 2? And that has to do with the charge. So silver has a positive charge, and copper has more than one possible charge. So you kind of have to know what charge it's going to be. But in this compound, it's plus 2. And since it's plus 2, and nitrate is minus 1, it needs that 2 to balance the charge to make a neutral compound, and that's why the 2 in front of the AG happens as well. Okay, So that's how you see that working. Um, let's look at the next example. We have iron and copper. So if we find those, we already found copper. It's right here, and iron is up here. So you consider which one is higher. Well, the iron is higher. So it's the one that wants to be in a compound. And over here, you see iron's by itself. So they got to switch places. So now the iron goes with the sulfate. All right, and again, we balance the charges. The car copper here was plus 2. The iron is also plus 2, OK? So that's how you come up with FeSO4. Remember that SO4 is minus 2. And then the copper is all by itself. So single replacement, the metals switch places. The next one's a little bit different because we have magnesium and then we have an acid, hydrochloric acid. You think, well, is there a metal there? There's not really a metal, but hydrogen in an acid kind of acts like a metal. It's a cation. And so the magnesium and the hydrogen are the things we're going to look for. So here's hydrogen. It's in parentheses because it's not really a metal. And then the magnesium is clear up here. Well, magnesium is higher, so it'll want to be in the compound. So you see we put the magnesium with the chloride. And again, magnesium's plus 2, chloride's minus 1, and that's where that 2 comes from. So that's one of our products. And then we put hydrogen by itself. But hydrogen by itself is not like the copper that's a solid. Hydrogen by itself is a diatomic gas. So that's H2 gas, and that's where we get that product. And then once we make those compounds, then we balance it. And we can see we have two hydrogens, two chlorines, and so that's why we have this two here. All right, let's look at the last one. The metals we have are copper and silver. Now, we've already looked at copper and silver. Here they are, copper and silver. And the one that's higher is copper which means copper should be in the compound. Well, it is. See, copper is in the compound. So it's already happy. Nothing's going to happen. 
And that's why we put NR, no reaction. It's happy the way it is, it's not going to switch. So the thing to remember is the higher metal wants to be in the compound. If it already is, there's no reaction. Okay. So um, when we have the copper in a compound with the silver by itself, the copper is higher, so there's no reaction. It's already in the compound. But if we have the silver in the compound and the copper by itself, well, the copper is higher. It doesn't want to be by itself, and so that's when they switch. So you do have a reaction with this one. You get copper nitrate and silver as a solid. And I put these pictures up here to show you what that looks like. So in this beaker, we have the liquid is silver nitrate, aqueous, and what we're dangling in it is a copper wire. So that's the copper wire. And at first, nothing happens. But as it sits there, you can see this fuzziness forming on the copper wire. Well, that fuzziness is the silver. So that is silver coming out of the solution. The other thing you notice is the solution turns blue. And the reason for that is the copper is going into solution. And copper nitrate is a blue solution. So you see the solution turning blue. And you can see both of those products occurring, the silver by the precipitate forming on the wire, and the copper nitrate is the blue color. And it's important to recognize that the order doesn't matter. If I write silver first and then copper nitrate, or if I reverse those and write the copper nitrate first, then the silver, it doesn't matter. It's just like addition. You can write them in any order. And same with the reactant side. It doesn't matter if you put the metal first and then the compound or the compound then the metal. Let's look at hydrogen in a little more detail. Um, because hydrogen is on this list, hydrogen is an acid, the metals above hydrogen will all dissolve in acid. So you see hydrogen clear down here on the list. All the metals above it dissolve in acid. So for example, and this is one that you do in the lab, if you put zinc in hydrochloric acid, well, zinc is right here, and it's above H. So zinc doesn't want to be the metal. It wants to be in the compound. So when we look at zinc and HCl, what's going to happen is the zinc and the HCl will switch places. So now the zinc is with the chloride, and the 2 comes because zinc is plus 2. And the hydrogen is by itself. And remember, that's going to be H2 gas. And so in effect, the zinc dissolves because the zinc chloride is aqueous and the hydrogen becomes a gas. So what do you see? What is the evidence? You see bubbles, the hydrogen gas forming off of that metal, and the metal is dissolving. Now the top six metals are bolded. And these six will treat water like an acid. So they are strong enough or active enough metals that they'll pull the hydrogen out of water. So here's an example of how that works. So calcium is one of these metals. And this reaction on the side is calcium in water. And what happens is that the calcium, if you think of water as HOH, instead of H2O. So one of these hydrogens is going to switch places with the calcium. So it becomes calcium hydroxide. Okay, so that calcium is plus 2, hydroxide's minus 1, and that's why you get the 2, calcium hydroxide. And then this hydrogen is going to be elemental, which is hydrogen gas. And then since you have two hydrogens, two hydrogens, you need two waters to make it balance. So the top six metals will do that. Not all the metals above hydrogen will dissolve in water, but the top six will. And you might remember the cesium in water reaction that was so violent. That's an example of this type of reaction. 